hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hello, welcome to today. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm so excited to be here with each and every one of you guys. Thank you for coming in love and light and happiness. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So let me know how is everyone doing today. Let me know if this is your first time joining me. If you've been with me for a while, if this is your first time. I'm so excited today. Oh, I love, I love being here. I love being with all of you guys. And this is my greatest passion. Today we are talking about healing heartbreak and finding love. So who's excited to heal their heartbreak and to find love? So if you are ready, let me know in the chat. Say, I am ready. Let me know who's tuning in. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And today is all about letting go of the pain, the hurt that we may feel over a breakup, a, a ending of a relationship, an ending of, you know, grief and coming into feeling love. And if this is your first time with me, my name is Jen Rose Giannetti. I am a love coach. I'm a spiritual teacher. I have many labels, many titles. But the essence of what I do is I help people to heal their pain and to come back into unconditional love. I truly believe that two things in this life will save the world, and that is true, unconditional love and meditation. I believe that through meditation, meditation is medication, and we can heal, we can receive, we can overcome anything that we desire through the state of meditation. But today, we are talking about love, and love is unconditional. You know, it is who we are, it's what we are, it's what we've always been. And in my belief system, I believe that the reason in which we feel pain, the reason in which we receive trauma, the reason in which we get sad and angry and frustrated and all of these human emotions is because of love because we are love when we are not feeling love then we feel hatred when we're not feeling love then we feel sad and grief and so all of today everything i do is bring us back into a state of love because love is the answer love is the solution it's what i'm here for it's my purpose it's my passion true unconditional love so I'm excited. Let me know who's here. Hello, Lisa Brown. Hello, TJ. Ooh. So today's objective is we are going to journey from heartbreak into self-love. I have a new course on my dashboard. If you saw, it's called Heal Heartbreak, Find Love, the same as this title. And today is going to be a little bit of an introduction into that course. So if you were interested in checking out that course, today will be a little bit of a sneak preview. So how today is going to work is we are going to start with just an opening circle, opening love, opening connection into this community. I then will be giving you guys a beautiful talk. If you guys were here on Wednesday, it's the same talk I gave on Wednesday, so just be aware of that. Of course, it'll be a little bit different because I'm in a different state and it's a different day, but it's the same idea and essence, so just so you know about that. And then I will open it up to a question and answer followed by a, um, a little meditation. So I'm going to dive right in today. We're going to dive right in. And I'm going to ask you guys to just close down your eyes for just a moment. And just settle into this moment. Take a deep breath in through this moment. Take a deep breath out. Coming into stillness. 
coming into this moment. Take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out, letting it all go now. Breathing in again and breathing out. And just start to come into this vibration of love. What does that feel like? What does that look like? Come into love, unity. Breathe into this vibration of love. And imagine that love is a beautiful crystalline light that is anchoring in from the cosmos, that is anchoring in from the divine spirit above. Imagine that this love is anchoring down through your head down into your feet, filling up every single atom, molecule, cell of your being. And breathe this love in. And breathe this love out. <sighs> and now just imagine that you are connected in community with everyone that's here. Everybody that's on this live. And imagine being in this community where everyone is acting, feeling, behaving, embodying unconditional love. Imagine what that would look like, what that would feel like. And breathe this in. And breathe this out. Sending love from your own body out to everyone that's here. Sending light and receiving this light of love. So breathing in love from all those around you. And sending out love. Breathing in love. And breathing out love. And just set your intention for today. And come into this place of love. Breathing in. And breathing out. And starting to open up your eyes. Coming into the space. Notice what you can feel. Notice what you can see. Welcome back, everyone. All right, everyone. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me know who is here. Hello, TJ from Minnesota. So beautiful. So everyone, I love communication. I love when people talk to me. I love when I have feedback. I love to talk, but it's even better if I have someone to talk to. So please engage with me. Please let me know how you guys are doing, what questions you guys have. And so I just want to start off with a question. And I want you guys to answer in the chat. And the question is, how many of you believe that heartbreak in some way has shaped who you are today. I want you to imagine this heartbreak that you felt, maybe you're experiencing it right now, maybe you've experienced it in the past. How has that shaped you? Put in the chat. Hello, Ashley. Hello, hello. How has heartbreak shaped you? So I want to start off by I want to put a tease about this, this live today is called Heal Heartbreak, Find Love. Although, let's be honest, our heart is never actually broken. <laughs> our heart is never broken. Our heart has continued to beat 
in our chest from the moment that we are created in the womb of our mother. Always. Our heart continues to beat for our aliveness. Our heart continues to speed up and slow down just as we need it to. And so no matter what pain you may be feeling, no matter what sadness you may be feeling, your heart isn't actually ever broken. <laughs> it's always beautiful. It's always working for you. Yet we use these terms like heartbreak because it feels like our heart is wounded. So let's call it a wounded heart. So what does, how do we define, I'm going to say not heartbreak, but the essence of heartbreak and a wounded heart. How do you define that? Put that in the chat. Thank you for the hearts. I feel I've been on a mission to love myself again. Yes, yes. I went through a different narcissistic relationship and the inner turmoil finally cutting off was more than intense. Feels are recirculating. It's like you're having to break up with someone you believed was real, even weirder. Yeah. I want to find love again, but I also want to feel 100% ready in my heart. Yes, yes, yes. But today is going to get you ready, Ashley. Today is going to get you ready. And it's all about self-love today. So thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your rawness. Thank you for your honesty. And the good news is, if you resonate with today, then you can, you can um, start the course on my dashboard, Heal Heartbreak, Find Love, because it's been announced. And this is just a little sneak preview. So, put in the chat, how do you define this not heartbreak, this heart wound, this heart pain, this need for heart healing? How do you define that? Put that in the chat. And recognize that heart healing, the heart pain that we experience, is not just from a breakup of a romantic partner, but it can come from friends. It can come from the friends who knew us for so long, who we lost connection with. It can come from the death of a loved one, or maybe a family member, you know, feeling like we were deceived or hurt or wronged by our family member. Or it could be even in our professional lives. This idea of heart ending, <laughs> I'm trying not to say uh, a heartbreak, but a breakup, let's say a breakup, it's not just from romance. And it's a part of our universal human experience. Every culture, think about it, every single culture has songs and stories and tales of heartbreak, woundedness, heart healing, breakups. The best love songs in the world are the Whoa, she hurt me and I, blah, 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 I'm hurting so badly over this relationship. <laughs> Don't mind my singing, but the best love songs are the ones of woe. The best storylines, the best movies are the ones where someone ends up hurt and they find their way back to love. And so it's engraved in this human experience. And so often we want to feel the love and the joy and the happiness and the peace and the beauty. But we don't want to feel the sadness and the anger and the frustration and the grief and the guilt. But those are a part of our human experience too. And we have to honor those as well. Because when we know how deeply we love, sometimes the pendulum swings. And we feel hurt. And we feel deceived. And we feel grief. And we feel guilt. And we feel regret. And the amount of your pain is the amount of your love. So remember that if you take nothing else from today, if you take only one little piece from today, take the piece that the amount of your pain is the amount of your love. You cannot experience pain if you don't love. So celebrate the pain. Celebrate the heart. Celebrate the anger. Celebrate the fact that you're so angry that you don't know how to handle it. You're so sad that you can't stop crying. That you're in so much pain. Celebrate that as you are a lover. I am a lover and I love deeply and I give all of me and I am open to receiving the love. 
and I will love again. You can't not love. You can't not love because you are love. You are love to the core of your soul, the core of your being. You are brought into this word as love, and you will always be love. You always have been, you always will be. So wake up, wake up, wake up, you are love. <laughs> so tell me in the chat, who has ever experienced heartbreak? If you've experienced heartbreak, say me. Put me in the chat. There's 24 of you guys here. <laughs> and I'm going to assume that every single one of you guys. Yeah, put a hand. Yeah, me. We've all experienced heartbreak. And so just look at the chat. Me, me, me. I bet all of you guys have experienced heartbreak in some form. Whether it's a breakup from a romantic partner, a friendship, our parents, our childhood, our heart. There's only two people saying me, but I know it's all of you guys. And so recognize right now that you are not alone. You are not alone in your hurt. You are not alone in your heartbreak. You are not alone in your heart sorrow or your pain. You're not alone in the trauma that you've experienced in your life. The reason that I am a heartbreak healing coach, <laughs> the reason that I help people to transcend their heartbreak is because I've been through hell and back, excuse my language, of heartbreak. Oh, thank you so much for that donation, Ashley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, I thank you so much. I've been through so much pain in my heart. And I wouldn't take any of that pain back for any part of me. Because it made me who I am today. It made me the fabulous coach that I am today. And so I would take all of that heart and I would relive it because it's made me who I am today. So I want to let you guys know that you are not alone in the heart that you feel. That you are held and you are loved and you are adored and you are worthy and you are wanted whether you feel it or not. Whether you feel you're wanted, whether you feel you're worthy, whether you feel you're deserving, whether you feel that you're loved, whether you feel that you're enough, you are. You are. And I will say it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Because not enough people are saying it. TJ, being vulnerable and taking risks means that we can be hurt. Yeah. When someone we care about hurts us, we feel heartbreak. Yeah. At least that's how I understand it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Imagine walking around literally bubble wrapping ourselves. What kind of experience would that be? We have to keep our heart open. Affirm in the chat. I will keep my heart open. Because what ends up happening is so often we're so scared to get hurt and to get rejected and to feel abandoned and to feel all of these emotions that we close down our heart. When what we really want is love. We not only, let's be honest, we not only want to be loved. We do. <laughs> I want to be loved. Who wants to be loved? Put in the chat. But we also want to love. We want to love. We all love us. It feels really, 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 really good to love someone. We want to. Yet so often we're scared of not being loved back. And when we're scared of not being loved back to the, to the, the equality of how much we love, so often we can close down our heart and refuse to give love and be love. But you are love and you always will be love. And so what happens when we close down our heart is we close down our heart when we want love. And then our partners or the people that we want to love or close down their heart. So now, so let's take, for example, you're in a relationship. You have a fight with your partner. You know you love your partner. And you close down your heart. Well, now that you've closed down your heart, now your partner doesn't feel loved. Now your partner doesn't feel seen. Now your partner feels like an idiot, let's be honest, because they're like reflecting all this love at you and you're just being cold and heartful. Not because you want to be. Of course not because you want to be, but because you're trying to protect yourself. And so then what they do is they close down their heart. So now... You have your heart closed. They have their heart closed. 
and you have two people who really, 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 really love each other, but they're closing down the heart as a protective mechanism to keep themselves safe. And the effect of that is what? A breakup, an ending. When you never wanted to end the relationship, that's not what you wanted. You want to love them for the rest of your life and you will love them for the rest of your life, whether you go through the breakup or not. And so when we keep our heart open, just like you said, TJ, we're being vulnerable and we're saying, well, you know what? I am willing to get hurt. I am willing to be triggered. I am willing to be pained. I am willing to feel anger. Because the love that I feel I know in all of this, it's all love disguised in a different way. Imagine like anger is literally disguised, but underneath the anger is like really love. That's what you're experiencing. And so I want to encourage you guys, don't close down your heart. Keep your heart open. Put it in the chat. I will keep my heart open. I found that you will keep your heart open, although you can keep your heart a little guarded. There's nothing wrong of guarding your heart. It's okay to guard your heart. That's okay. I'll give you an example, okay? If you go to the airport, who's ever been to the airport, put it in the chat. If you go to the airport, if you go for the airport, hold on, let me get a drink of water. I'm tripping on my boards. If you go to the airport, if you go to the airport, the doors to the airport are always open. They're never locked. You can always get into the airport. And once you walk into the airport, you then have to go through a security checkpoint. Well, the security has to check your baggage. They have to see, is your baggage safe? Can you bring it on the plane? And once your baggage is checked and has gone through security, then you can proceed even further into the airport. You can go to your gate, you can get on the plane, and you can take off to your destination. In the same way, this is love. Just like an airport, keep your heart open. Although have a security checkpoint. Once they come in, you let them soak, you let them a little bit into your heart, and then you just pause, not stop, but you just pause, and you go through their baggage. They go through your baggage, because let's be honest, you both have baggage. You're both bringing baggage into the relationship. And you go through a security checkpoint of, can I not only live with the greatness that you are and the love that you are and the light that you are and the beauty that you are, but can I live with your feels? Can I live with your past? Can I live with the ghosts in your closet? And you decide, can I live with this or can I not live with this? And if all goes well, then you allow them to make it through the security checkpoint. You allow them all the way into your airport, your heart, your heart is the airport. And you fly away together on the plane into love. You're flying away into love to the destination of your love. Whether the destination is you want marriage or the destination is long-term commitment or the destination is more travel, whatever your destination for your love life is, you go through that. And sometimes you have to get off the plane and you have a stop. Sometimes you have a layover and you have to go back through the security checkpoint again. You have to recheck your baggage. So don't, so keep your heart open just like the doors at the airport are open. Yet guard your heart. Have a security checkpoint until you've checked their luggage, you've checked their baggage, and they've checked your baggage, and they've checked your luggage. Let me know if that resonated in the chat. Thank you for the hearts. Yes. Beautiful. So, moving on. <laughs> The healing process is deep. 
and those four parts, so it's more than four parts of that healing. I'm so glad that helped you. So those four parts of the healing process that I want to talk about today. And the first one is acceptance. For us to heal, thank you, for us to heal, we have to first recognize and accept the pain. We can't deny the pain. We can't deny that we're hurt. We can't deny that we're angry. We can't deny that we're so rageful and angry at our partners. Because that's only going to deny our healing. If you're really angry and you're really frustrated and you're really hurt, you can't pretend that you're feeling all love and all joy and all good and everything's good and everything's fine. You are love. You will always be love. Underneath the anger is love. That's true. Although you might, even though you are love, you might not be feeling love. There was a difference. And so you have to accept the pain. You have to accept that, why don't I I feel hurt? I feel angry. I feel resentful. I feel regret. And once you can accept it and you can acknowledge it, then you can move forward. Before you can become a millionaire, You have to first accept that you have, you just make six figures. You can't make it to the million dollars if you don't first make it to six figures. Or maybe you can miraculously manifest a million dollars overnight, but the six figures will be within the million. You can't accept that you have partnership if you don't first accept that, hey, I am my own self-being. So to get where you want to go, you have to first accept where you are and then move forward from that place of acceptance. For you to lose the weight, for you to get that dream body, you have to first accept, hey, I'm overweight. Hey, I don't like my body. Hey, I'm not happy with my body. Hey, I want to change this. You have to first accept the weight on your body and move forward. That's the secret to self-love right there. The secret to self-love is I accept where I'm at and I want to be better. So I'm going to grow and I'm going to change and I'm going to evolve to be a better version of myself. So accept. Understand that it's okay to grieve. It's okay and it's normal. Grieve, cry, yell, scream. Grieve. Grieve it. Feel it. You are a human being, not a robot. There's enough robots that are trying to take over the planet right now. Chat GPT and all these AI systems are all over the place. Just be the human that you are, okay? The world will figure out the whole robot thing. (laughs) Next, surround yourself with support. There is a huge importance of community and friends and family. Professionals, me, coach, get a coach that can help you, that can hold you, that can support you. It's okay to ask for help. You did not come into this world able to feed yourself. You did not come into this world able to change yourself. You did not come into this world without your mother. (laughs) You literally were created in the room of your mother. You need support to be alive. And this idea of I can do it all on my own, I can grieve it on my own, I can do it, I can feel it. No, you can't. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be completely raw, completely open, completely honest. No, you can't. <laughs> I am someone who is a fake independent. Let's be honest. I'm like, I'm independent. I don't need anyone. I don't need any help. I don't need anyone to help me or anything. I can do it all on my own. Until there's a heavy couch that I can't lift. And I'm like, shoot. I need someone to help me lift this couch because if I try to lift this couch by myself, I'm going to break my back. And that's what ends up happening. As if we try to do it on our own, what ends up happening is we end up getting hurt even more than we were hurt before. You have to get help because you have to have a different frame of mind. You have to change your thinking. In order to heal, you cannot heal in the same frequency that you're feeling heartbroken. You cannot ask the question and get the answer in the same frequency. They exist at a different vibration, at a different frequency. 
at a different level. You can ask the question and then you can receive the answer, but you have to shift your consciousness to a different frequency. It's the same with support. It's a different vibration. So allow yourself support. Take self-care. Make sure that you're working out and you're eating and you have a good diet and you're meditating and your mindfulness and you're listening to me on Insight Time more obviously. Take the self-care that you need. Whatever self-care is for you. Yesterday, my whole day was nothing but self-care. I told my partner, I said, why know what? I am having a self-love day. I went, I got my nails done, I got a pedicure, I got my eyebrows done, I went salsa dancing with a girlfriend, we went out dancing. I took my self-care because the truth is, when I'm able to take my self-care, when I'm able to love myself fully, I come back as a better partner because I've filled up my own cup. So now I have enough to fill and pour into someone else. So, yeah. How does that resonate? What self-care can you take? Because self-care is the first step. What is one way that you've practiced self-care after feeling heartbreak, after feeling hurt? So the way in which we heal our heart is by coming back to and rediscovering self-love. The truth is love, self-love, it's not vanity, it's sanity. I'm gonna repeat that again. Self-love is not vanity, it's sanity. Good, yay, Luann! We cannot love anyone fully until we can love ourselves. Trust me, I've tried it doesn't work. It only works for so long. We have to know that we are enough. We have to know that we are loved. We have to know that we are beautiful. We have to know that we are attractive before anyone else can tell us how gorgeous we are and how loved we are and how wanted we are. Because otherwise, we're going to constantly seek that external validation of, I only feel beautiful when my partner is telling me I'm beautiful. And when they don't tell you you're beautiful, then you feel heartbroken once again because you feel like you're not enough. And then it destroys you. So we cannot continue. And don't get me wrong, I'm in a partnership. I want him to tell me I'm beautiful and I'm loved and I'm wanted and I'm adored. Of course I want those things. You know? Although I know that he cannot be my, what's it called? He cannot be my well of self-love. <laughs> I have to be my own well of self-love. And you know what the secret is that I've realized? When I am feeling beautiful, when I am feeling loved, when I'm feeling wanted and I don't need him to tell me I'm beautiful or I'm loved or I'm wanted, then magically somehow I'm so loved by him and he's constantly telling me he loves me and he's constantly telling me how beautiful I am and he's constantly telling me that I'm wanted. And why? Because I don't actually need him to. Because I feel that within myself. Because life is our reflection. We get what we are, not what we want. So when I know that I am loved and I'm loving myself, I'm that much sexier to him and the world. Because I'm not needy. I'm not needy. I can, I can do it on my own. And it's nice to have support. And it's nice to be reminded that I am loved and I am wanted and I am beautiful. I don't need it. I want it. And believe me, guys, I'm human. I want it. <laughs> I want the affirmation. My love language is words of affirmation. Tell me you love me all day long and I will be the happiest person in the world. Although I have to remind myself like, hey, Jenna, Jenna Rose, I love you. Jenna Rose, I love you. Jenna Rose, I love you. It's, listen, it's a never-ending journey. It's never-ending. So, practice self-love. We can do this through daily affirmations. Like, I am beautiful. I am safe. I am secure. I am loved. I am wonderful. 
And you don't even have to believe it at first. It can be hocus pocus at first. But once you start saying it, you would then start feeling it. And then once you start feeling it, you would then start experiencing it. And then once you start experiencing it, then you will be living it. And then you will be it. Affirmations are powerful. They're absolutely powerful because our thoughts create our words. And our words create our actions. And our actions create our habits. So that's how we manifest our reality. I can put look at this at a spiritual point, or I can look at it as a very physical 3D, feet on the ground point of our thoughts create our words, our words create our intentions and our actions, and our actions then create our habits, and our habits create our destiny. It's that simple. <laughs> so daily affirmations, set boundaries, say no. It is safe to say no. Say no, 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 no. No is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. And if any of you guys are like me, I had this wound for so long that I had to explain my no. I had to explain why I didn't want to do that, or I wasn't going to, or why I didn't feel like it. You don't have to explain anything. The greatest self-love is just say no. And I'm not going to explain myself. You don't need to. Beautiful. Jamie, I, this will be posted on YouTube after, so you can um, get the beginning after. And I also have a whole course on this that you can um, start the course, Heal Heartbreak, Find Love, Fail too. This is a little bit of a sneak preview, but thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, pursue your passions and hobbies. Pursue your passions and hobbies. So I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to get vulnerable. I'm going to get raw, and I'm going to get open and honest with you. I love my fiancé. I love him. I adore him. And just because I'm in a loving relationship does not mean... I don't experience heartbreak. So often in our life, we believe that once we find the one, once we find the husband, the wife, the person that we want to spend our life with, that all of the heartbreak will be gone. Although the truth is, guys, sometimes it can make the heartbreak even greater. Because when you're in a committed partnership, you're going to stay. You're going to work it out. When you are married, you have this, this commitment that we're going to stick it out. When your life is so entangled with each other, you can't just walk away. And so fights happen, arguments happen, disagreements happen, triggers happen, triggers happen, triggers happen. There was a wounded little child inside you and there's a wounded little child in them. And sometimes... Those little children inside of both of you guys are not playing well together. And it can end up feeling pain and anger and sadness and resentfulness. And the way in which you get through it, when you are not getting the love that you want from the outside world, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to go internal. And you have to give that love back to yourself. You have to. And when you give that love back to yourself, when you pursue your passions, when you pursue your hobbies, then they will come around and your relationship will be that much better. It will be that much stronger. But so often in relationships, and let me know if this resonates, we have this tendency where we start to lose ourselves and our partner. We do. I lost my, I, I do that all the time and then I have to wake myself back up. And the other day, here's my vulnerability. The other day, me and my partner got into an argument. And our arguments usually are very soft. They're usually very gentle. I came from um, a family where there was a lot of yelling, there was a lot of screaming, there was a lot of fighting. And so I have a wounded inner child in me that does not like when my partner raises his voice. He literally, I can count on one hand how many times I've ever heard him raise his voice. 
because that's my boundary. Don't yell at me. My boundary is don't yell at me. You can be assertive. You can yell outside. You can do emotional release, but don't direct it at me. That's my boundary. And the other day we had an argument and he didn't yell. He didn't scream, but he just looked at me and it was so mean. I felt it was so mean to me. I couldn't believe it. Like my inner child was like, oh, you didn't just say that to me. But he looked at me. He's like, Jenna, get a life. Like in that tone. And I was so hurt. It broke my heart, guys. And I was like, oh, he's telling me to get a life? Like, and I was so hurt that he said that to me. And I looked at him and I said, I will get a life. That was my response. That was my inner child's little sassy remark. I will get a life. And in him saying, Jenna, get a life. It was like, even though I felt hurt and even though it seemed mean, it brought me internal to remind myself of, oh yeah, I have a life outside of you. I, had a, I have a life outside of you. I can go and I can leave the house and I can get my nails done and I can go salsa dancing and I can pursue my passions and my hobbies. And sometimes we forget our passions and we forget our hobbies in our love life because our, our partners become our passion and they become our hobbies. But our partners cannot be our passions. They cannot be our hobby. <laughs> yeah, red-handed, I try to make my partner my hobby. <laughs> I try to make him my passion. And there's a different difference between I am passionate about him, we have passion, and him being my passion. I can be passionate. He can, and I can be passionate about our love, but he can't be this this passion or I'm going to lose myself and so when he said that to me I took that as an opportunity of it was almost like I'll show you how much of a life I have my little sassy inner child and I went salsa dancing yesterday and I got my nails done yesterday and I like put myself like really big into my business and I attracted a new client and it turned out amazing <laughs> And he triggered me. That was the trigger. But the truth is we get so upset because we're so triggered. But triggers are like doctors who are pointing to us and saying, hey, you have cancer. You have a disease. You have an illness. You're sick. The doctor didn't make us sick. The doctor is just revealing to us our diagnosis that they are observing. And the doctor could be wrong. Maybe you're not sick at all, but that's the doctor's diagnosis that he's telling you you're sick. And in the same way, our partners are our doctors. Our partners are revealing to us where we are out of balance, where we are lacking wellness, where we are lacking who we really are, and the versions of selves that we really want. And so we have a choice to either scream at our doctor and say, you did this to me, because so often we do that, right? We get triggered by our partners and we say, you did this. You made me feel rejected. You made me feel abandoned. You don't make me feel loved. It's your fault. You did this to me. When, if you take a step back, you realize, oh, wait a second. They, they didn't call, make me ab feel abandoned. My parents made me feel abandoned when I was a child. And now my partner's triggering this wound of abandonment so that he, as my doctor, can help me heal it. He can help me heal it. And he, that doctor, can either help you heal it or... You can go to another doctor, you can break up with the person, and you'll find a new doctor, and they can help you heal it. Or, you can break up and do it all on your own, and not have any support in healing it. Your partners are not causing the dis-ease. Your partners are triggering it so that it can be brought up to the surface, and it can be healed, and it can be worked through. And the most loving relationships in the world are the loving relationships that say, want to know what? 
I see you hurting. I see you in pain. I see that I triggered you right now. And let me hold your hand through this. Let's get through this together. Because it's not you against me. It's us against the problem. Together, we will fight this. Together, we will work through this. And that's what we do together. My partner doesn't not trigger me. My partner isn't, it's not always joy and love and rainbows and butterflies. But when something big does come up, we hold each other's hands and we say, we will get through this together. Yes, I feel pain due to your actions right now, but together we will work through a solution. Your problems are my problems, not enmeshment. I'm not talking about enmeshment, but it's talking about commitment and love means we will work together with whatever is manifesting on the surface. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Christina. I love that. Um, I'm grateful for that. Um, we do live together. We do live together. Um, and my name, just look up my name, Jenna Rose Genetti on any form, any, on any platform. Oh, beautiful. I'm so glad. Okay, so I went on a tangent. I hope that's okay. But the, the bullet point I had was pursue passions and hobbies, and I went on a whole tangent. I hope that was okay. Another way to, fall, to practice self-love is to celebrate your small victories. Celebrate the small victories. Not just the big ones. Not just you receiving a million dollars. But celebrate the penny that you just found on the floor. So often we walk past all these pennies that are just standing in the street. But wonder what? That penny just made you one, one penny ritual. If you can't be gratitude, in gratitude for the one penny that you just received, you're never going to be grateful for the million dollars. Be grateful for the love that you feel today. Today, my cat um, cuddled next to me all, all night. He has this tendency of meowing and meowing and meowing all night because he wants to go outside. And he did not meow all night last night. He slept next to me like the perfect little baby cat, kitty cat. He didn't leave my side. We snuggled and cuddled. That's a small victory. I got to sleep next to my kitty cat without him leaving my side. That's a small victory. I'm drinking water. I'm getting my water intake. That's a small victory. You cannot make it up a mountain if you can't celebrate every step that you take up that mountain. So, celebrating the small victories is the greatest form of self-love. And it will then bring it into the big victories. So put it in the chat. What is one small victory you have today? What is one small victory you have? Next, make sure that you exercise. I know this sounds silly, but we feel better when we exercise. It doesn't have to be just going to the gym or doing a specific workout. But moving your body, moving your body. Yes, going to yoga. Yes, I love yoga. We store trauma in our body. Okay, I don't know if you guys know this, who knows that, who doesn't know that. But trauma is stored in our body. And so through somatics, a lot of what I do at home, I mean, not, not at home. I read, you said home, Luann, Elan. One, okay, let me restart. One thing I do in my coaching is I do somatics. And somatics is moving your body to move the trauma, the healing, the pain out of your body. And so I highly encourage you move your body. Practicing emotional release tools. Me and my fiance have a whole list of tools in our head that we use to let go of our anger, of our sadness, of our grief, of our pain, of our struggle. My partner, it's my boundary that he doesn't scream at me. Although I encourage him to scream. I encourage him to go outside and yell and to move his body and to pillow punch and to stomp and to throw a temper tantrum. Children 
Children are great at temper tantrums. Who's a mother here? And children are going to kick and they're going to scream. Whether you're at the grocery store or you're at home, they don't care. And the reason is because they are in tune with their body on a subconscious level. And they know that the way in which they move the pain that they're experiencing in their moment is by throwing a temper tantrum. I'm going to encourage every single one of you guys today to get on the floor and kick and scream and throw a temper tantrum. Move it out of your body. Yell it out of your vocal cords. Get it out of your body. I'm telling you, this is proven science. This isn't woohoo. Children throw temper tantrums because they, are, they know somatics. There was somatic therapy, I do this in my coaching, of physically moving the pain out of your body. It will help. So move your body. It's the greatest form of self-love. We do need to act like children sometimes, Melissa. Absolutely. Grab a lollipop and then get a, throw a temper tantrum because you accidentally dropped your lollipop. Yeah, self-pleasure is great. Jeff, do that too. Do that too. I am all about the self-pleasure. Do that too. But, and, and, one, and Jeff, that, that's a great example. Thank you for bringing that up. Why is it, like let's get serious right now. Why is it that when we're stressed, we have this idea of, oh, I need self-pleasure to relax. Because it's the stress relieval. The orgasm is, it relieves stress. It relieves the anxiety. It causes chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, to flow through our body, the happy chemical. In that same way, we need to move our body into emotional release. It, will, it releases endorphins, it moves the trauma out of our body, and it brings us pleasure. So try it. Anything, temper tantrums, boxing, boxing nose, pillow punching, stomping, grief ritual. If any of you guys need any help with any of these emotional release tools, send me a message. I'm happy to teach them. Maybe I'll do a live. I'll actually set up a live um, next week and I can teach you guys the emotional release tools if you want. So helpful. So needed. Okay. Next. Re-entering when you go through a heartbreak, when you go through a breakup, when you go through pain. The next step is we go come into self-love. Self-love, self-love, self-love. We talked about that. And after we've filled up our cup completely and we are finally in this place of I have so much love to give because I've given myself so much love that I can now overflow all of this love that I have to someone else. When you finally are ready and do not enter into a relationship until you can honestly look in the mirror, completely naked, and say, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love the things about myself that I don't like about myself. And I'm going to improve those things about myself. When you're ready to enter into a new relationship, carry the self-love that you just formed into your relationship. The sexiest thing in the world is someone who loves themselves. It's not about looks. It's not about how pretty you are. It helps. But it's about the confidence of like, yeah, I know I'm good. I'm not talking about being conceited. I'm talking about true self-love. It is sexy when someone is like, hey, I love myself. I'm confident. This is who I am. This is who I am unapologetically. Enter into, this, into a new relationship, caring self-love. Healthy relationships require two whole people, not seeking another to complete you. If you are seeking someone to complete you, you're going to fail every single time. I've been there, I've lived it, I've experienced it, I am teaching, I am coaching from experience. This is how I think about relationships. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys. I think about a relationship like you have your own house, you have your own car, 
you have your own bed, you have a coffee maker, you have to have a coffee maker. If you don't have a coffee maker, we can't be friends. Sorry guys, I love coffee. <laughs> you have all of your own stuff. You have your own house of love. And you look around your house and you say, ooh, I would love a new throw pillow for my couch. Oh, I would love a blankie for my house. Ooh, I would love a lamp for my house. I don't need the throw pillow. I don't need the blankie. I don't need the lamp. I still have enough light. I have enough comfort. I'm warm. I don't need it. But you know that blanket would make me, it would cause me to have much more comfort. It would feel much more warm if I do have that blanket. I would feel a lot more safe and secure. And it would feel really good on my skin to have that blanket. And I would sleep really good on that pillow. And that lamp would really light up my house. It would really add a lot of color and vibration to my house. I don't need it, but I sure want it. That's how we need to enter into relationships. In this place of you are complete. You have a complete house. You have everything that you need in a house. And you would just like a blanket or a pillow or a lamp or whatever it is, a new coffee pot that would add to your life. It would add and make your home better. You don't need it, but you recognize that it adds to your life. Have clear communication, boundaries, and mutual respect. The only way to have a healthy relationship is to be able to clearly communicate, to clearly talk, to tell what your desires or what your wants are, what your boundaries are, and have mutual respect. And pay attention to the red flags and the warning signs. I talked about before about we don't close down our heart. We keep our heart open. But we guard our heart like a security checkpoint at the airport. I gave that example earlier. And we'll, it's important that we notice and we recognize unhealthy patterns when we meet someone. And self-love can help with this. It can help. When you meet someone and you feel, you feel those butterflies and those goosebumps, ask yourself, are you feeling these butterflies and goosebumps because this is so familiar because they are embodying a similar feeling that you felt as a child that was unmet by your parents so often the reason that we have this huge chem chemistry when we meet people and we have these butterflies when we meet someone is because of something called imprinting and imprinting is we look for partners that are going to give us the same exact feelings that we had when we were a child. Whether we had a healthy childhood or we didn't have a healthy childhood. So if you grew up in a very traumatic household, very often you will attract partners who give you that same feeling that your mom and dad gave you of your needs not being met and you feeling unloved and you feeling unwanted and you stay in those relationships for a long time because it's safe it might not be healthy but it feels safe to be with someone that doesn't choose you because you weren't chosen as a child and so it's familial and you don't know what would it feel like to actually be chosen what would it feel like to actually be wanted what would it feel like to actually be loved ask yourself <laughs> so that's my talk for today. <laughs> we are just at an hour. I hope that helped. I have a course here on Insight Time or Heal Heartbreak. Find love. Yeah, Jeff, I hear you're going through a breakup. This is what I do. I help people through the breakup into love. So I have a course on my dashboard. Check it out. Heal Heartbreak. Find love. Let me know what you think. Make sure to review it. And if you're interested in learning more, in coaching, in healing your heartbreak, in 
walking through this breakup and finding your confidence and finding your voice and being your authentic self and loving people and being more spiritually connected, then check out the link in my bio, send me a message, and I would be happy to talk with you guys and see how I can best serve you, how I can best help you. My inbox is always open. Do not be a stranger. You can also um, add my my group here on Insight Timeless called uh, Hio Love, Generous Janani. And let's just take five minutes of questions before we end. What questions do you have? And then I'll lead us into a short meditation. What questions do we have? What feedback do you have today? All feedback is good feedback. There's no such thing as bad feedback. So whether you love today or you didn't like today, let me know so I can become a better person. And most importantly, guys, take what resonates and throw away what doesn't. If it felt good to you, great. And if it didn't feel good to you, great. (laughs) I encourage you guys to disagree with me. To say, why well, know what? That doesn't resonate. And I ask that if something doesn't resonate, to take a pause, to feel into it. And so often, if we get triggered by something, sometimes the trigger means truth. Sometimes there's the truth, and the reason we're getting triggered is because it's something that we haven't yet faced. So I embrace, I encourage you to just meditate on it. Don't take it as fact. Don't take it as truth. But just think about it over the next couple of days and be like, hmm, could there be something in this? And if after a couple of days you're like, nope, she's still crazy, still don't like it, throw it away. Find a new piece of advice. There's many different religions in this world because there's many different truths. There's not one truth. You can lose weight a million different ways. You can find love a million different ways. You can make a million dollars a million different ways. That's not one way. So find the way that works for you. Great teachers will tell you to think for yourself, not think what I tell you. So I encourage you guys, discover your own brain. So let me know, do we have any questions? If not, I will lead us right into a meditation. And thank you guys for the donations today. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the love. And I can't stay long, guys. I can probably only stay like, I'm going to lead us in a really short meditation because I do have to get going. Um, Next week, I go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I will do a longer meditation one day next week. Beautiful. I I will write that down. I'm going to write that down right now, Alexis. How to get rid of trauma in the body. Beautiful. Emotional release. I will definitely do that. I will put it on my schedule for next week. Um, Alexis, just so I know that you can make it since you suggested it, what day works for you? I go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Does Um, If I did a week from today on Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, does that work for you? And everyone else, feel free to give your suggestions. Please do. I am here. I am tailoring all of my lives to what you guys need. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, I put it on my calendar and I will make a live when we get off of this on that. Absolutely. How do you encourage a family member who's going through a breakup with someone um severe months ago thank you for that donation thank you thank you thank you um how do you encourage a family member who is going through a breakup with someone severe months ago yeah so the way that you encourage someone is by holding space allowing them to have their human experience not telling them how they should feel or what they should be doing but literally just holding space for them Allowing their anger to be there, allowing their sadness to be there, allowing their tears to be there, and telling them that they are that they are safe to feel whatever they are feeling. 
hold space for all of their emotions and all of their feelings and allow them to be there. Encourage them to get angry. Encourage them to cry. Encourage them to dive deeper into self-love. Remind them of who they were before this breakup. What did they love to do? What were they passionate about? Encourage them to maybe get a coach, whether it's me or someone else that can help them through this. And just remind them that they are loved, that they are wanted, that they are seen. So encourage them by allowing them to have the human experience, validating that whatever they are feeling is good. Let them know that they are not alone and encourage them into self-love. Let me know if that helps. Yeah. And sometimes one of the worst things we could do, and I am, I am, <laughs> I'll be honest, it's not, I'm a rescuer. I'm a rescuer to the core of me. And I'm constantly working on it. I am someone that when I'm seeing someone in pain, when I'm seeing someone having this experience, I want to just rescue and I want to hold them and I want to support them. And so often, this is one of the hardest lessons for me to learn, is that we can hold space for someone's heart, but we can't take away their pain. We can put a bandage on them. We can bandage them both up. We can wipe their tears, but we can't take away their pain. And so hold them um, and, res and, and realize that you can't rescue them. That if we try to rescue them, then we are going to we very often end up taking them away from their breakthrough moment. And I've done this in my own life where someone's like on the a cusp of a huge breakthrough, a huge realization. And they need to feel that sadness. They need to feel that anger. They need to feel that, bang that bitterness. They need to feel that resentment. Because through those negative emotions, that is the key to them having the realization of what they do prefer, what they do want, what they do love, what they do need. And if we rescue them when they're in sadness and when they're in pain, we take them away from that growth opportunity and that evolution and experience that they need for the future to get through this. So I recommend you hold space for them, but you don't rescue them. Let them have the pain. Let them have the pain. What if they enjoyed going on dating sites? They can enjoy going on dating sites. Absolutely. Although, I, when it comes to dating sites... I would question, what are you actually searching for? What are you actually searching for? Because whatever, are you searching for your life partner? Or are you searching for validation to be wanted and to be loved and to be told that you're beautiful and to be told that you're sexy and that you're wanted and that you're smart and you're intelligent? Are you seeking something outside of yourself because you're not giving it to yourself? Or are you actually on dating sites because you are ready to be in a relationship? And I'm going to tell you a secret. Dating sites work. I, and there's many people who have found their life partner on dating sites. I'm not anti-dating sites. I've been on da dating sites. I was on dating sites for a long time. Although I can tell you that this is a vibrational world that we live in. It's law of attraction. And that when we are fully ready to meet the person, our next great love, they will come and we won't have to search it out. We won't have to go on a dating site. We won't have to go out and make ourselves known in a social gathering looking. We won't have to look for them. They will just come. They will just come. <sighs> so beautiful, 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 beautiful everyone. All right, guys, so I'm just going to lead us into a little breath meditation because I do have to get going, but I really thank you guys all today. I really appreciate all of you guys. If you have any more questions, please feel free to send me a message. Check out the link in my bio. I'm here to help you guys. Thank you for all the love and the donations. 
I really appreciate you. Hello everyone and welcome. Closing down your eyes now and just start to come into this moment. Reflecting on all that you learned in this lesson. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. <sighs> and just reflect on this idea of healing heart and finding love. Breathe in. Taking another deep breath in. Taking another deep breath out. And just reflect on what did you learn today? What did you learn today? What breakthroughs did you have today? What changed in you since the beginning of this call, this slide? And based on today's workshop, what action step will you be taking moving forward? What action step will you take moving forward? And reflect. And when you're ready, starting to come back into this moment releasing all of this workshop releasing 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 and setting an intention as you move forward about your day take a deep breath in and a deep breath out opening up your eyes coming back into the space welcome back everyone Feel free to put in the chat, what did you learn today? What realizations did you have? What breakthroughs did you have? What action step are you taking moving forward based off of this workshop? I allow all feedback. Thank you guys so much for joining today. Let's just put our hands in front of our heart. Bowing down with me, namaste. I love you. I appreciate you guys. This will go on YouTube. Right when we get done, I'm going to upload this onto YouTube. Um, give it about 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at most, and then it will be on my YouTube. My YouTube is Jenna Rose Gennetti. All of my social media is Jenna Rose Gennetti, so you can find me on any platform and follow me there and keep in touch with me with all of my um, coaching offers and workshops and things that I do off Insight Timer. And I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I love you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good day.